Let's just talk about different topics on the table. I don't know if you watched golf yesterday. Uh, Scottish Open. What a phenomenal finish. First of all, I love. They were just outside Glasgow. Uh, that's where the Scottish Open is put. I just love the Scotland landscape and the wind and the breeze. And they were wearing ski hats like it was cold. And they were play <laughs> And they were playing. Robbie McIntyre is from Scotland. This was a spectacular performance by him uh, in the Scottish Open. He roars from behind and posts the victory. I mean, it was really stunning. He had a 41-foot uphill putt Whoa. on 14 for a birdie that started McIntyre's run. And, of course, the Scottish native had everybody behind him. He got an eagle on 16. He birdied 17. And then on 18, needing the putt to win the tournament, he had a 21-footer on 18. And the gallery in Scotland just went crazy. I mean, it was it was really electric. Uh, and all the name golfers just never could close on him because once he turned the corner, when he did what he did at 14 with a 61-foot shot, it was over. And and then the question was, was he going to be able to chase down the leader and get the victory? And he did. And he just kept hitting big shot after big shot. And he had everybody behind him. So the Scottish Open is the springboard for this coming week's British Open, which is in Troon, Scotland. And I'm so fascinated to see because they're going to wake up early in the morning to watch this sucker. I mean, like 2.30 in the morning, pal. Really? Wow. Yeah, because it's going to be televised live. Okay. Uh, Scottish Open at Troon, historic course. And the matchup's going to be Bryson DeChambeau wearing LIV colors. Mm. And Scotty Scheffler, who has dominated the PGA Tour. Rory McIlroy is there. Rory did well in the Scottish Open. That should be the door to open for him to go get something accomplished there. So that's that's kind of fascinating, too, just to see how that situation is, is going to play out. 158, I think that's the most golfers have teed off in the British Open uh, since 1995. So, uh British Open. I love the British Open because you're you're facing very tough conditions on the golf course. You're facing a phenomenal field of marquee global players, and you're facing the weatherman. And the weather coming off the Irish Sea, it could be anything in the different hours of the day. You knew that when you went to Ireland, you were yeah. drinking beer at the yeah. Guinness Guinness Brewery, and you know that clouds move through, and then it's raining, and then it's yeah. sunny, and then it's hailing, and that's what those guys are going to face. So that is going to be absolutely fabulous. Tennis, Wimbledon just concluded. Uh, changing of the guard, I guess, <coughs> is now complete. Novak Jokovic coming off knee surgery six weeks ago, forged his way into the finals, but he got run out by Carlos Alcaraz. It looks as if Alcaraz is the next star on the men's side in pro tennis because there is, there is no Rafa Nadal. There is no Federer who's retired. Jokovic. At age 39, looks like he's probably at the end of the road. And Alcaraz looks to be the guy. I don't know who's the next star on the women's side. All the top seeds got knocked out. Some in the first round, some in the third round. None of them got to the women's finals. So that'll be fascinating to see. We're, I think we're going through the changing of the guard. Soccer. Holy cow. Was this, this was a great Sunday. Oh, yeah. The, the championships in the, in the European championship. Spain wins it for the fourth time. England put up a dogfight to stay in that thing. It was really impressive. Spain scored early, looked like they were dominating. England just manned up defensively. Suddenly there were turnovers. Ball was going the other way. The English had scoring opportunities. They scored on a mishandled pass in front of the goalkeeper. Spain came back, however, and won on a two-on-one break uh, in the – 84th minute. It was really impressive. Uh, and just, just, just to see these guys and what it means to them. Harry Kane was so exhausted. They pulled him at halftime, the English superstar. So they, they were really down, but Spain is brilliant. Spain is vibrant. And like I said, it's the fourth time they've won the Euro championships today. King Charles at Buckingham palace wrote letters to the head coach, Garrett Southgate and to Harry Kane, the captain 
saluting them on behalf of the entire country for what they did. Right on. Yeah, it was really cool. I saw a copy of the letter on a website in London, and it's just really cool to me about he talked about how they carried the flag so proudly and they wore the three lions jersey, etc. So that that was really neat because they had, they had taken an enormous amount of criticism going into the tournament, and they've not. I don't think they've won. European championship, but maybe one time in the history of all soccer. So they, they got there, but they were exhausted getting there. We go from that to what happened in Miami last night, the Copa America championships, um, ugly incident before the start. They had to delay the start for an hour and 22 minutes because South American fans who did not have tickets broke down the gates to oh, get in. And it was really ugly. The arm, the armed guards were there. They couldn't control the crowd. Copa's taking enormous national heat for how they failed at security and put so many people at risk by allowing all these people to crash the gates and not having security to stop this, not having proper procedure to allow the fans in there at, at that stadium in Miami. When they were done, I remember telling you on Thursday, I think it was, I said, how many times do you think Lionel Messi is going to get kicked? Because Colombia just plays like it's a street fight. Mm -hmm. And he got kicked and he got knocked out. He got knocked out 55 minutes in. He was done. And he went to the bench and he wept and cried because he was out of the game. He re-injured his, his ankle again and he'd been hammered a couple times prior to that. And the refs the refs didn't call it. They just let Columbia mug people. I, apologies in advance. I don't know if there's any South American soccer fans who are on our, uh, this podcast. They are the dirtiest team I've ever seen. I mean, they they were violent tackles, spikes high, forearms to the back, hits to the throat. I mean, when they go up for headers on corner kicks, they were doing this. Mm. I, mean, I couldn't believe it. And the referees just let it go. Maybe that's the way they play soccer in South America. Uh, but at the end of the day, Argentina won, won nil. They're one of their great veterans, uh, Michael Martinez, scored the game-winning goal. And Messi just stood on the sidelines and whipped like a baby. And then he was the first one that roared onto the field. And then, you, and then you see all the players of the Argentinian team just weeping what it meant to them to win the world championship. So just a phenomenal tournament. It wasn't the World Cup. The man was damn close to it. Yeah, it, it was. really was. Uh, let's talk about coaching situations. Team USA, uh, a little bit surprised. This whole Team USA thing, the, the firing of Greg Berhalter, the insinuations in England that I've been able to dig up are that they cannot afford and are not going to be able to hire Jurgen Klopp, the legendary Liverpool and Dortmund head coach from Germany. He, he, he resigned Liverpool or announced he was retiring from Liverpool at the end of the season, and it sure does not look like he is, is going to get hired, uh, that maybe he doesn't want to negotiate. Evidently, he's going to take... He's going to take a full calendar year off. So they're they're going back to square one to try to determine what they're going to do. Team Mexico, you know, we I critiqued their roster before the Copa tournament became, began, and I said, I don't understand why you're leaving all these veteran players off there. Chucky Lozano, who is with the San Diego MLS club, San Diego FC, was left off. Uh, Javier Chicharito Hernandez was left off. They did not have a show of their star goaltender. Anyhow, they just fired their coach, uh, Jaime Elzano. They keep firing guys every year. <laughs> there's there's no foundation. There's no philosophy they build on. Uh, the feeder program doesn't seem to be working. So Team Mexico seems to be in a lot of trouble. So, John, I threw a lot of stuff out there. If you wish to talk about the Scottish Open, British Open, Wimbledon, or talk soccer, the podium belongs to you. Well, it's interesting if you're a Spanish soccer or a Spanish sports fan. It was a great weekend, right? Oh, yeah. You know, because you got Alcaraz, you got the the Euro Cup. So, you know, good on those guys. Did you see in the Wimbledon, though, that um, Jokovic was in the finals, but he had surgery on his knee like about six weeks ago? Exactly. Which is incredible. Yeah. Well, again, if you have minor meniscus surgery, that could you could be back. NFL guys come back in three or four weeks, baseball players, if it's minor. Mm -hmm. And evidently it was minor, and he was back for six, but he had to grind through it. He did get a break, though, because in the semifinals, his opponent withdrew because of injury. So he never played a semifinal match. He had uh. extra days rest there. But uh, 
he had a he had a tough time with the fans. They are they are anti Jokovic fans. They bombarded him with criticizing, uh, ha- harassing well, the vaccine and all the that. whole vaccine yeah. thing. And he yeah. was just, you know, he brought his tennis racket out and played it like it was a violin. And you know, <laughs> after he won his quarterfinal match, he just he gave the fans back as much crap as he happened to take. Yeah, and then going to the soccer matches, I watched both of those, and they were fantastic. <laughs> you know, and to your point, yeah, Kane, I, they showed him on the sidelines in the Euro final, just looking sort of flatlined, you exhausted, know? exhausted. And you know, I was still like, why is this guy not playing? And then to see Messi, and did you see his ankle swell up? Yep. I mean, it was really bad. Um, but Argentina's had a great run for these last four to six years. Um, I was surprised by the refs letting the the ball the players play because you're right it was rough. Uh, Colombia looked good. I was shocked they didn't score in that first half. They had opportunities, but uh, they just could not put the ball by. Are you going to accept my critique that Colombia is the dirtiest team you've ever seen? <laughs> well, it Ooh. is Colombia. You know, there's just some rough, tough guys in Colombia. I but, wonder if we have any followers in Bogota. Well, but you know, it, it's 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 cool seeing all these other South American nations <laughs> and understanding a little bit more about the personalities and the pros and cons of each of these teams. I like it, and I like the fact that there's different sort of styles of playing depending on the nation or even depending on the continent. So that's where we are. Hey, it's time for this. 